Hello, six of ones tonight for you. This is a scene where we are looking at a man who is wearing a victory wreath around the top of his head. And he's riding a decorated white horse through a crowd of cheering people. So his horse represents strength, purity, and the successful progression of adventure. Here's this man, and he's wearing this victory wreath around the top of his head, and he's riding a decorated white horse through a crowd of cheering people. The horse represents his strength, his purity, and his successful progression. The grief of people that surround him marks the public recognition of this man's achievements. So the rider's holding an upright wand, the wreath tied to the top. That emphasises his success and his achievements. He's not afraid to show others what he has accomplished in his life so far. And even better, the surrounding crowd is delighted to cheer him on. Now, some of the meanings of this card appears when you've reached an important milestone, you're achieving a significant goal, and you're feeling confident, self-assured, and things are booming. It's about harnessing your strength and your talents to bring about a happy outcome in your endeavours. And you've made it through all that chaos of that rough ride of the five of wands. So let's think about that. We did our tutorial as in about the five of wands. And the five of wands minimises distractions and been focusing on the tasks in hand. So let's just take a moment and just remember the Five of Wands was the scene of conflict, competition. So here in this scene, we are seeing that the results of who won the competition. We'll forget that, don't we? And this is the person out of that mock battle that really had the victory. Now, those that were in the battle are now the ones that's viewing his victory in the crowd. He's now got to focus on the task that he was saying he was able to do. So if there were challenges that had been overcome, and now it's about concentrating energies on the target of what he said he was going to do. So the victory, we've got somebody here that came out of that and said it's me. So the Six of Wands suggests that not only have you achieved your goals, but you've got that public recognition for the acknowledgement of your efforts. So you might have recently received a, an award, reward, which acclaims or recognises who you are from your peers for your work. It might even just be a bit of a pat on the back. But this attention boosts our confidence and will give you the strength to continue in your endeavours. So the Six of Wands also encourages us to put ourselves out there and to be proud of our achievements. And so it's about being able to shout from our successes and let everybody know, shout it from the rooftops and put everything there for others to see and cheer you on. Be open to receiving that love and that support from them when we've succeeded. So it's a time for us to shine. And the Six of Wands is a positive encouragement to believe in who you are and what you've accomplished up to now and so far. And it's about having faith in what you've done and how others will receive it. So this isn't a time to let fear or guilt stand in the way of your success. You ought to be proud. It's a time to hold your head up high and know that you are worthy of this admiration. So often we feel, I'm not an expert. Most experts are an expert in, and I say this a lot, in such a tiny bit of their expertise because it's niched down so much. And that is where we can sometimes feel, I shouldn't be proud. Am I really worthy of this? 
do I really know everything? There are people that know a lot. But an expertise and a victory like this is an important milestone. And so we've got to remember that we're not at the finish line. So although it's a victory, you might still have some way to go and the challenges might impede your progress. But you've got to take heart and you're supposed to look at those around you that are supporting you and here to back you 100%. If this was coming up in career work finances, that sort of area, so if you're looking at wanting to get a new job and the six of wands comes up, this is the card of succeeding in the role that you want. If somebody says to you, well, I do well at the interview, here you go. This is somebody that's going to walk into the interview and be able to confidently talk about their accomplishments with pride. And they might even draw upon recent recognition or awards for the work that they've actually done for previous or even towards the potential employer. In your current job, so that applies to all of us, perhaps in many different ways or not. There's a lot of people working. So the six of wands can indicate that you'll receive praise for what you're doing. You're getting that pat on the back. People are actually giving you that feedback. And you might receive a work-related award, peers, but more recent success and those achievements. So it's a really positive card and a positive time, particularly with work. Interviews, this is the card you're looking at. This is, yep, you'll be successful in any post of application that you apply for. I always like to say it like that. And then that covers everything. So it's if I'm going to be interviewed by the examination board to see if I'm worthy of the credit. Uh, it's a very important card when people are asking about career prospects, work, all those kind of things. We've got to sustain high performance because it's now expected of me. So the six of wands can invite you to create even more success through building your brand and reputation. You want to be successful at what you do, but at the same time, you want to ensure that others know about it and give you that recognition that you deserve. You might need to promote yourself more frequently by sharing your experience and advice with others and encouraging them that they can follow you on a similar journey. And you might soon have success stories to share within networks. This is about applying for awards or scholarships to build on your brand or to receive public approval for your endeavours. The Six of Wands suggests that you have received financially, financial reading, rewards for your efforts and accomplishments, bonuses, your earning what you're worth, um, you're being valued, yes, but not valued like the empress. You're valued here to do with the fact that you have earned this and you fought that competition, like in the Five of Wands. It might be a performance bonus, scholarship, it might be a grant or an educational prize. The reward has nothing to do with the lot. It's got everything to do with you and your achievements and very hard work. Now, if we're looking at this card as a personality type, what are the six of ones people like? It could be any relationship, friendship, potential romantic, boss or colleagues or friends. The Six of Wands is a personality that is achievement orientated. They are well accomplished. They're performance driven and they're recognized by others for their accomplishments. The, the Six of Wands personality is unafraid to tell others about their successes and victories because they really enjoy being in the limelight, receiving public recognition for something they are proud of, that they believe in, 
that they have worked hard and want to do well in. And it can be a tendency sometimes for them to be a little overconfident and people may see them as boastful at times. But the six of wands just wants to share that positive energy of his achievements to benefit others. Think about that. If we are looking at this card and we're getting questions about relationships and love, if you're looking for a relationship or looking for love, the Six of Wands is a wonderful card because it's about action and it offers wonderful encouragement and suggests that you might find potential partners soon if you are on the lookout for one. But there's also an element of recognition that you'll be quite proud of yourself for being noticed by this person. Takes us back to high school, doesn't it? You know? So, oh, I feel very proud to be with this person. So it's a victory, see? It's a card of victory. It's, oh my gosh. In an established relationship, the energy is lovely, high vibes, and very flowing, very action orientated. Yeah. If you're a couple, much more likely to give each other that positive action or feedback and appreciation so that you communicate the journey of enhancing each other's confidence and pride. It's also possible that you'll be recognized publicly for something that may be associated with that very connection. For example, your relationship might get profiled in best couple or fun event, celebration, competition, something where, so if you're in a relationship, it's probably saying that the two of you are doing incredibly well and a little bit of, um, shall we say, positive PR. It's all positive, nothing negative. All victory. We can see the characters in the back that perhaps were not so lucky in their endeavors. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Spiritually, if somebody's asking, am I on the right path? Is this the right thing for me? The Six of Wands suggests gratitude for the encouragement and inspiration others give you. It's about feeling blessed. Let's just go back to this, eh? Isn't that lovely? As we began the show and the video tonight, Passionate Saji, Saji said, I'm good and feeling blessed. So exactly what I'm saying on a higher level, this card's about feeling blessed by the universe and sensing that someone looking down on you and making sure that you've not been forgotten. So the six can often, it's a very positive number in tarot, okay? And it's very much about referring to a spiritual breakthrough and recognition for your spiritual insights and understanding. So am I on the right path? If somebody's asking about, will I be all right? I'm not being, I'm feeling a little bit. Am I going to do well or am I going to be in a, a position of doing the right things by myself? Not spiritually, but I think what they're saying, is this good for me? All right. And sometimes people want to say, what about health? Don't do health. It, unless you want to get sued, that's what doctors are for. And we are not magicians. We can't see into people's lives. So let's keep it to well-being and say, it suggests that you'll triumph over anything that's been making you feel concerned. Am I all right? Am I doing too much? Am I not exercising enough? Am I exercising too much? You might be recovering from an illness and going, I'm really run down. Am I going to get over this? And it's like your overall well-being, if you get this card, will also benefit from lots of good energy and positive vibes from lots of people. Let me give you the key words. Okay, this is a yes card. This is success, victory, triumph, achievements, awards, winning, 
riding high, top of your game, the best of the best, having the upper hand, recognition, promotion, presentations, supporters, applause, sharing success, self-confidence, self-esteem, pride, campaigns. Thank you very much. New websites, you know, you've been working on courses the last two days. Brilliant, brilliant. Go on, I know what you've got, but let's share it with the viewers, which courses you've actually been doing, if you'd be so kind. People have done it as they've actually done the intermediate and they've done the advanced because they were so excited about method. And then they've gone, I'm now going to go back and I'm going to do the co-op cards because I need to know more. You can do it in any order. By the advance first, if that's what you want to do. And I'll try to put it as clearly as possible. So I really do hope you enjoy it. Here we go. I'm going to put that up, intermediate, <laughs> and just started advance. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Now, the method, I know you've just started, but how are you feeling? Are you feeling that this is something you can keep going back to at home, on your own? Whatever you want to do. So the man's on horseback, suddenly disappearing and all hell's breaking loose. Huh? Why? Because these people are rowdy. If they are, if you're going through a crowd, people are making a noise, they're whistling and clapping. And so this might be quite a noisy environment for that horse. And so this white horse looks as a, look how elegant that horse is. It's telling you something. And it's prancing around as if it's dressage on tippy toes. Always look at that because it gives you this graceful, elegant. Describe what you're seeing in the cards. This is when we're doing our intuition. You can have all the meanings in the world. And that's really important for you as a technical reader. I call myself a technical reader. Yeah. It's but looking at it, it's really coming together. The astrology is now helping me to link it all together and incorporate it in the readings. Definitely what I wanted to know. That's absolutely fantastic. So you can actually see there's a place to go. Look at work. Here we go. Just like an astrologer does. I remember Sandra last year saying the same thing. Fee turned around and said, it gave her the confidence to be able to feel that the pressure became less because it became, it was the system told her what to say. And then she could add to that with her own intuition. Once you've got the confidence with how to put it together, you'll plug into your intuition combined with everything that you know. And that's where you become an absolute star. And when you are talking confidently because you trust and you believe in what you're saying because it's right, you feel better. When you feel better, that person feels that from you. And then you can, it doesn't matter whether you're, you're doing online, phone, whatever it is, they will connect with you because they feel you're the one for them. You know what you're doing. You know what you're talking about. You're not apologizing for anything. Remember, we are all constantly bringing pieces together. I've got a deck that I use all the time these days um, because my clients love it. And <laughs> the system I use, they absolutely love the technical side. They are customers. I read for them, they're not learning it, they, they don't want to learn it, they want me to look at their lives for them and challenges and responsibilities in their lives. Debt is called the Shuffle Deck and there are two versions, the Shuffle Deck A and B. The Shuffle Deck, it combines images, you will get a combination of characters turning up like the full sitting on the Emperor's throne. You've got a combination of the full plus the Empress energy in one card. 
Now, they're not all like that. Sometimes you will see a minor card combined with a major card. So it's a fabulous deck. And you might go, where's that from? There's a couple where I've gone, there's a different drawing. Uh, so different decks can puzzle me, excite me, like I hope they can for you. And that's where the thrill of it all is. So I, I totally get it. So one of the decks that I would really recommend for someone that's excited to go, now this is a puzzle. Wow, what's going on here? The shuffle deck, A and B, okay? So let's go back to this card. This horse is dressed in ceremonial rugs of green, gold, and red. And remember, that all means something, okay? And the horse is incredible dressage, a thoroughbred. His coat is glistening and his thick tail looks like it's swishing backwards and forwards in some decks. He's quite enormous, and so that means power, and he could be forgiven to think that a crowd would probably maybe even say, how spectacular is that horse? Does it matter? You know, it's a bit like saying, oh, they're not looking at me, they're looking at my horse or my scooter or bike or car or whatever it is. Look how the expression on the horse is. But the man that's riding on his back is perhaps the cause of all the excitement. But the excitement, he's tolerating his rider, but you never know. He might decide he's got something else in mind. It's noisy, could be an unpredictable situation. I sometimes pride before a fall. Dressed in a long, flowing, deep tan, orangey coloured robe, soft figure, with tan leather boots and gloves. And all those colours mean something. And he's holding his head proudly and haughtily. We cannot see that, but because of their height and they're all of a similar level, one assumes, according to all the research I've ever come across, that they are standing. If you want to see it, that they are riding, but maybe riding on. I doubt they're riding because they are so close. It probably wouldn't be working, would it? Probably quite dangerous to be clashing into each other. We've already had that with the five R ones. He's wearing a large laurel wreath, as I mentioned, on his head, sign of victory. And his wand is firmly grasped in his right hand. Okay. Lots more symbology about all this kind of thing on the courses. I can't give you everything here. So we'll limit what we're telling you here. But I tell you a lot, as I think you know. On top of the one, there's another wreath. And it's patterned with a bright red ribbon. And that matches the horse's bridle. Okay? And that can be for identification. But wreaths, symbolically, represent victory and success. Think of the Grand Prix. Beath around here, yeah? The wand is held in the right hand, and that's symbolising his triumph. So it's just a little bit there. And connected with his outer world. And so he is the one everybody's acknowledging. Maybe the horse thinks it's him, but they're there for a reason. So this guy probably is enjoying the limelight and being centre stage. He's fought for it, hasn't he? He's carrying two wreaths. One's on his head and one's on his wand. The ace of wands is what everybody's holding. So when we began talking about the ace of wands, it's that spark of inspiration. Everybody in this scene has had that spark of inspiration. And theirs didn't come to as much as this fellow. He was the one that got the victory out of the whole scenario, the whole competition, if you like. He was the one that was victorious. We go back to the Ace of Wands, where everyone who draws that card gets that. And the other point being, it's what you do with that. We're all given an equal chance. It may not all be 
you will get your recent ones on Monday the 1st of the month. It might be different people, different times, different situations, a bit like your horoscope. We don't all have the same things written in our horoscope. We see that if you're this or that or the other, you're going to get this today, you're going to get that, this is good for you, this is not so good, the cycle of life and how it flows with its twists and turns. Wreath on his head suggests his personal victory and his achievement and his success. While that wreath that's on his wand is the reward for his loyal supporters who have helped him to get to this point in his journey. Gratitude as well. And he knows how to play the crowd. Good PR and public recognition. This man's appearance and posture, again, if you're reading for somebody and getting this, it's telling you about them, where they are now. But it depends where it is in your position and what the major card is. You might be your own saboteur, like the hangman, and I've got this chance, but I'm just going to sit there and do nothing. I want to look at every perspective. And it's like, you might actually not win the competition if you sit on the fence too long. Yeah? So it's that kind of thing. So this man's appearance and posture do suggest his strength and self-confidence at the moment. Remember, none of us like that permanently. It's an aspect. So both he and the horse are dressed up for the show. It doesn't mean you're permanent like that. It's an aspect of us. So even though this horse looks like he's also incredibly graceful and elegant and proud, let's look at that. It looks as if the man's not really holding the reins with both hands. We know that he's not. He's holding that ace of wands that was his ace of wands that's won his victory in his right hand. The horse is accepting that his master, he's allowing it and accepting that's okay. And that's because the two of them are on the same vibe. There's some connection going on here. And we don't know what the connection is with those behind. Or he's sitting one way on to, to the left of him, I'll say, in our figure. We don't know. We can't, but we also can't see the expression of the rider's face, can we? He looks, his whole stance is elegant, confident, and it looks like he's riding high. And it looks as if these people are like, yay, well done. A lap of honour. All his hard work and effort. Let's put all this in and it's really good to get support from others. We all need that pat on the back. We really do. It's important. And not everything is about the fact that we've got to keep working really hard to just keep doing that Groundhog Day. There has to be something in it where we definitely start to feel that was worth it, that we are valued. And so this is him feeling like he's a popular, worthy of his success, looking deserving of that part. Nothing too fancy, but he looks like a a great sportsman, and his opponents are now acknowledging his superiority over them. They are walking behind him, pretty sure of that, while he's mounted, and they've put all their differences to one side to celebrate that they've all gained something out of this. We've now got a leader, and this man's sitting on horseback, and He's now saying, okay, I'm now going to let this day be that I bask in the glory. I've got to keep it up. And amongst all the competition or the opponents, it's an unspoken understanding because there'll be, of course, he's a champion, 
But there'll be more battles to come to fight in the near future because he's got to keep it up because the game will be up for grabs once more. It's another cycle. But we should enjoy it. We shouldn't worry. We need to be able to know it's worth it, what we feel, it's a sense of pride, a sense of confidence. And people say, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to think people think I'm proud and smug. We are. I think we're all aware of not being too cocky or arrogant. And it's important that you're able to look at the fact that he deserves to be able to walk amongst those that stood a fair chance. And he must really just keep sight of the original goal and must show the world that is not just a one-hit wonder. He's got to deliver on the promises that he made, whatever they are, we don't know. The ground is very far away from where his sitting pride can come before a fall. So we mustn't get carried away, but you mustn't dampen it down either. And it, it's that fine balance, isn't it? Allowing yourself to actually have that pat on the back. They'll be watching and observing how he's handling her while he's at the top, and they'll be looking at strategies and whether he makes any mistakes. So he's, although we're in our moment of victory, one must be wary. There's a cut through our situation in competitions, which we assume it was because the battle of five are ones. And so it's going to be constant sort of newcomers peering on the horizon who will be sharper and more dynamic. And although the crowd appears to be giving them full backing, there's probably not everybody's face. We look, one's looking, looks like a woman there, just behind his back. There's a figure, looks as if, oh yeah, I'm looking, but I'm also looking over there as well, a bit distracted. And right in front of you, is that the moment to be looking away already? A bit distracted, oh, it's great. Make a zoom. How many of us have actually done a performance at school, on stage, or whatever it was, and you put all the effort in? And when you look at that audience, they're not looking. And that makes you feel like, is that because we're not good enough? Then you get stage fright because you are not concentrating on what you're doing. Your mind's wandering. You're not in control of what you're doing. And that's what happens when we're a reader. Stage fright. Fine. Until you go a bit thinking this, but that, you can't go there. You've got to be. This is how it is. This is the six of ones. This is what I've got for you. And sometimes people say, oh, I identify with the envy of the people below. Maybe you did. But when you get this card, you are not a person that's standing in the crowd. The six of ones is the victory. So we can't see his full face and we can't see his eyes. It's hard to determine what this man is doing. And is he concealing anything? Maybe he can't even look us in the eye. Who knows what he did? We don't know, do we? I mean, competitions are not always anything they could be. I thought um, we'll move fast on today's news of this victory. Oh, the ancient history tomorrow or the day after. Go with it while it's there. Because it'll only be as good as the day that happens. Sometimes people say, oh, we've got to keep it up now. You say that to yourself. You need to have that adoration. It is a yes card. It's about success being yours. You've won the day. And the six of wands, when it comes up in the spread, does suggest victory. And what you've been pursuing or what you've been fighting for, you've achieved it. It required hard work. Endurance, perseverance, and a lot of strong will and determination. And you've probably put in the effort and you've been rewarded well. And there's no battle anymore. But it's time to start building on what you're doing for the future and using your strategies. So it's about receiving the praise and that acknowledgement for what you've rightfully earned. You've beaten the rest, you've been declared the best. And it's top of your game. Cups yours awards forthcoming. I accept applause and those compliments. But we know that it won't go to your head because 
you don't want the temptation of going somebody could actually come along and be sharper than me and they'll achieve more staying at the top can be pretty tough we know that but don't dwell on that enjoy your moment of glory it's time to hold your head high when you get this card and feel proud of your achievements you've worked hard wands action work things that you've done so the six of wands when it appears in a reading suggest that you're incredibly passionate in a certain area of your life and you're putting all the effort in and you should feel confident and you should allow your self-esteem to be on the rise. You've got enough self-belief to convince others of your goals and ambitions. The skies are clear and it's not because you are blagging it or winging it, it's because you've worked for it, which suggests a trouble-free time ahead. It's a thumbs up. So the Six of Wands is always a yes card, a thumbs up, and that thumb up saying yes. And also, this is a card for displaying leadership qualities. It's about enthusiasm, motivation, drive. That not only are you doing well, but you're inspiring other people to get on board with you. And so any battles or differences are put to one side and Everyone's got the capabilities to actually have the project's best interests. Now that you've proved yourself, you'll find that people do want to work with you instead of against you because they realize that the goal that you had ultimately will assist them in their life. And so it's a win situation. Everyone's benefiting from this situation by now supporting. And sharing, there's a lot to this card, isn't there? It's a really, it's about having a leader. And yet we, we know it's not permanent and always. Nothing is. Nothing was like that. Not at all. It's all to do with the fact that the imagery of Six of Wands is, for this period of time, this is how it is. And the person having the reading I absolutely deserve this through hard work. Why we are in the suit of ones. Action, work, careers. Don't focus on doubting your abilities. Allow yourself to enjoy this success that you've earned up to now. And it's a very balanced. So it's a very wonderful experience to be able to say that, you know what? You've come to the top and you've beaten the stiff competition now. Six of Wands often represents the fact that you have been successful and you were prepared and have hard work. I'm going to say to you all, please go and have a quick look at um, the website. Please don't limit yourself by just pulling the odd card. You need to see the whole story. The whole story is a major arcana. And minor arcana telling you how you're getting on in those areas of your life. And it's really what we do in our spread. I, I really hope that you can understand why I find it very hard when somebody goes, I've got one card, I've got three cards, I've got five. And it's like you are denying yourself and the person you are reading the information about their life or your life. And people go, oh, you're not supposed to. Who said so? This is a whole system. It's like astrology. One looks at one's life. And yes, please know that when you've got the system, it is so easy because you have all of that information in front of you. Have a beautiful weekend and rest well. Okay? Till Tuesday or Thursday next week. Bye. Thanks for watching.